The full non-beta iOS 17 was released today and so you and loads and loads of other people have probably just updated their phone. Now there may be some features which you know of and you have seen, but likewise there will be others which you have no idea about simply because not all of them are advertised. Therefore today I'm going to go through almost all of the features which will be in iOS 17 which you can now try out for yourself starting with some of the more high profile ones. I will begin with possibly the most high profile and that is contact posters. Contact posters you can set up by going into contacts. You can create a contact, let's just call them Steve Jobs and done. And then you'll see here contact photo and poster. When you click on that, you can then create a contact poster for them with photos, with memoji, with the monogram. And so if I choose, for example, this photo of New York, you'll then be able to customize it and it works in a very similar way to the lock screen customization we've all got used to from iOS 16. So that's what it will look like when Steve Jobs, theoretically when Steve Jobs calls me. And then it will ask you if you want to create your contact photo from that photo. Uh, you can just use a different one if you click this at the bottom and you can also crop from the photo that you selected. So let's say I wanted to just use the flags there, I can crop into that, choose, apply a filter, done, and there we go. So that would be the contact photo and the contact poster. Now obviously I can't really show you what will happen when this person calls me, but I can show you what will happen when I call. So give me a second. So this is what it will look like if you're being called. You can tap on that and you'll see the full contact poster. And this is what it will look like if you're being called normally like this or even on FaceTime. Now if you answer, it will continue to look like this. And as you can see, it will ask you if you want to share your name and poster unless in the settings you have set it to automatically share it with contact only. To go into the settings and change whether you want your contact photo to be shared automatically, you simply open contacts and then when you're at your own contact, you just click on this at the top, contact photo and poster. I have it on always ask, but you can see you can change to contacts only and that will automatically share it with your contacts only. But this means all you have to do is change your own contact poster and then that will be shared with everyone if you have it set to always ask or your contacts so you won't have to set other people's contact photos. Ideally they will have set their own ones and you'll see it when they call you. Which means calling will just get a lot nicer or it will look a lot nicer from now on when using iPhones and iPads and Apple devices. Next we have probably the second most well known feature of iOS 17 and that is name drop. It is essentially an upgraded and much better, in my opinion, version of Android Beam, where all you have to do is hold the top of two iPhones near to each other and you can use AirDrop. Now, I'll show you here, you obviously need two iPhones to do this. You just take the two tops near to each other, you will see a very cool animation, and then those two phones will be connected. You can then share information, you can share your contact details and don't worry, 
you can go into your contact and add fake details if you want to share those. So once they're added to your contact, when you go to someone and use name drop, you can just select those fake details to share to them. And you can also use this just to connect and airdrop other things such as files. Another way you can use this is to start a share play. Share play over name drop works in exactly the same way. For example here, you just open a YouTube video and then you start using name drop. And there you go. It's saying they're waiting to receive and I can click the share play button and it will start a share play. FaceTime also gains two new features in iOS 17. The first and the more interesting one being reactions. You can turn on reactions by swiping down into control panel and then holding down on effects and there you can turn on reactions here. That's them on. Then once they're on, if you're in a call, you can use this series of hand gestures to activate all of the reactions which you can also see if you hold down on you, the box showing your camera in whichever corner you've put it in. If you hold down on that you will see a bunch of reactions and all of those reactions can also be activated using hand gestures as long as it's turned on in control panel. The next feature is something which has been in Google Meet, previously Google Duo, for some time. Essentially, if you FaceTime someone and they don't answer, you will be able to record a video to send to them in FaceTime. As you can see here, once the video is sent, it will show under the missed call from you. They can then click on it and view the video whenever they'd like. So the third major new feature of iOS 17 comes into play when your phone is plugged in. Note it does not have to be charging using a MagSafe charger, it can be plugged in via the cable and rotated to be horizontal. You then simply lock the device and here we go, standby. Standby is essentially always on display but it acts like a bedside clock. As of the release of iOS 17, you have this, which has two different modules. You have this, which actually, once you log in, it shows different pictures with the time at the top right. And then this last one, which is just a series of different clocks. You've got an analog clock, you've got a time zone clock, you've got this interesting color clock, and you've got this one, which is my favorite of all of them. This one is cool because third party companies can optimize uh, their widgets to be able to be put into here. So if I show you, now, uh, by the way, you can't actually use horizontal face ID on the iPhone 12 or older. Only on the iPhone 13 and up can you use face ID when horizontal. So if I try to edit something and it says face ID, it won't work unless I rotate my face to be horizontal as well. Uh, just if you're wondering why. You see there I rotated my face and it logged me in. You can see that there are lots of different widgets that you can use. I can scroll through, if I click plus, so you see there's the app store there, I can see, I can use a battery widget, a clock widget, uh, FOTMOB as you saw before, game center, uh, music, uh, let's add a music widget actually, and click done, and there you go. Uh, and you can change any of these, so I can go back to the FOTMOB widget and you see they all are on here and I can remove a widget like this. So with this music widget here, I can click play. It has to be unlocked. 
you will see here at the top, I can click this and boom, there's a music playing UI and this is for all media, it works, it's the same on YouTube, on Spotify, etc. And you just swipe it up here and it goes back into a little bubble there and you can obviously pause, play, change the volume and airplay. And as you also saw before, you can change what clock you have. And if you tap any of these, you can click this here and it will take you to that app. Now the last thing which you might see a lot when in standby is Siri. And I can use it while in standby and you will see it's optimized for this view. So if I say, hey Siri, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? Expect rain tomorrow. Daytime temperatures will hover around 19 degrees with overnight lows around 13. When's Arsenal's next football match? Arsenal takes on PSV in the group stage of the UEFA Champions League on Wednesday at 20 hundred hours. Messages has had its fair share of changes too. The first of them being visual. If you look, instead of what we had before, all you have is a plus button here in the bottom left. You click that plus button and you have a few options. You can share your location, send an audio message, all of your stickers, you can send photos from the Photos app obviously, and you can open the camera. And if you click more, everything else that you use to be able to do and some new stuff is there. You can open the store for messages, you can search for images, you can use other apps that you had before, such as City Mapper, Game Pigeon, Google Maps, Memoji, Apple Music, United Airlines, YouTube, etc. Looking at just this, the stickers icon is new and this is where all of your stickers from now on will be. If I click it, you will see these are where all of my custom stickers will go. You can click on here and see emoji, you can use all of your emoji as stickers, you can go to Memoji and you can go to all of the sticker packs which you had before and they will just be along here. This custom sticker drawer means that I can create my own stickers. If I click new sticker it will bring up the photos selector and I can select photos and make stickers from those. Or I can go onto the web, onto Safari. I can take photos from wherever in my phone. For example, if I go here, I can select this image just like I could before and click add sticker. There you go, it pops into the sticker drawer. I can click add effect then, I can add an outline, a comic effect, puffy, and this will react to the movement of the phone. So I'm just going to go with outline, click done, and then that appears in the sticker drawer. And I can use those stickers in any apps, I can use them in uh, Snapchat for example, or in WhatsApp, uh, which is a nice added feature. A simpler feature which has been added to messages is swipe to reply. I can just swipe over to the right and there you go, instant reply. Also, if you decide to send an audio message, Hello, I am testing the audio message transcription in iOS 17. And then send it. There you go. Hello, I am testing the audio message transcription in iOS 17. That will show up uh, for everyone who is on iOS 17 or newer. So the next feature, which you may have noticed when I was using the music widget, was interactive widgets. Now none of these are interactive, however if I swipe over to the left here and you see this music widget again, if I touch play it simply plays the music. There's no need for me to actually tap the widget and go into the Apple Music app itself. Obviously this will be up to third party de developers to integrate it into their own apps but it's something which was very strange 
that it wasn't in uh, widgets before, but it's nice that it's there now. Next, we have a more accurate keyboard. Now, this might not be the flashiest of changes, but given how much everyone uses their keyboard on, on their phones, I guarantee this will be one of the most noticeable ones after your keyboard learns how you type. Now, how, how is it improved? There's better autocorrect, uh, which learns what you type over time. Um, so if I like t typing a particular word a lot, then it will eventually learn that word. And if it autocorrects something, such as couldn't without an apostrophe to couldn't, if I tap backspace, you will see here, it will provide other options and this easy back button. Now, there it will learn that I like to type couldn't without an apostrophe, which I don't really like to. And you'll see this time it didn't autocorrect it. That's how quickly it learns. So next we have changes in Safari. And there are a few beyond the different look. It's quite similar to iOS 16. I'll just show you what Safari looks like on iOS 16 right now, just next to the phone. But it's subtly different, and that's because of the new changes in profiles. So, if I swipe up here, and if I tap this, I can create a tab group. So now I have the personal tab group or profile. This will have separate or well, can have separate extensions, separate browsing history, separate cookies and separate favorites to just my regular browsing. And I can create another one like work, for example, and it will be shared between all of my devices. And as you can see here, I can just swipe between them. However, once you tap into a group, swiping will swipe between your tabs. It's only when you swipe up that you can swipe between these tab groups or profiles. And you can also share these with other people. The other change goes to the private mode. It now locks automatically every time you exit. And as you can see, you can unlock it using Face ID. Apple also did say that it will automatically remove any tracking extensions from the end of URLs and it automatically requests not to track. So it's a bit more powerful and it acts a bit more like private modes on other devices now. Another change is with passwords. Can't really show you much in this, but as you can see here, or at least with these top two, I have a My Passwords group, which has passwords which only I can see. All of this applies to pass keys, by the way. Any pass keys will be saved inside your password section, just the same as a password. In fact, these two here, which will be blurred, these are both Google pass keys. They're not actually passwords. Anyway, as you can see here, I have family passwords, which are shared with uh, the people in my iCloud family. I can actually click plus here, and I can create a new shared group, and I can add people. So I just created one that's called test. And if I click on test, you can see I am the only member. Now you would obviously have other members, but I can create a password or move passwords to the group, which already exists. And there you go. Everybody who is in that password group can see the password, can use the password from Keychain uh, and the one-time passcode, which if you decide to save it, if you decide to save it in iCloud Keychain. Now that's already useful on its own, but what's even more useful is you know that feature where if you get a text with a one-time password, it will automatically show up 
in your keyboard uh, and your clipboard and you can then paste it into whatever application you're logging into. Well, that now works with emails. So if you receive an email saying your one-time password is ABCDE, then your iPhone will do exactly the same thing. It will copy it. You can then paste it into whatever you want and then it will delete or archive that email for you if it can. Now the next feature is offline maps. Of course Google Maps has had this for ages, you've been able to download maps, but it's good to see Apple slowly improving Apple Maps. I just open maps there and you can see I can select a place like Derby and then you will see a download option there and I can select Derby and download it. And if you tap your the dot which indicates where you are, you can also download a map of wherever you are. So it will probably be of where you live. Another feature is, at least in America, is you will be able to see, if you're using car directions, the status and availability of electric car charging spots in real time along your route. Siri has had an update. However, don't get your hopes up because there are only two things which have been updated. First of all, you can activate it by saying Siri. There you go. There's no need to say hey anymore there at the beginning. What this will do is make it a lot more annoying when talking to someone. The only other thing which they changed is uh, it can have a sort of continuous conversation. It's not as good as Google's continuous conversation, but it's something. So if I say, Siri, what's the weather like? It's currently cloudy and 14 degrees. Today's high will be 20 and the low will be 14 degrees. What will it be like tomorrow? Rain is forecast tomorrow. Well, there you go. As you saw, I didn't have to use the wake word in between those two requests. So this is a quick one, but if you're in a car, you will be able to use share play together. So people in the back of the car, as long as you are using Apple CarPlay, will be able to share play music and uh, control the music in the car. Now, you will have to accept it, of course. Random people can't just start playing music in your car, but it's nice that you won't have to give them your phone to choose the music and their searches I know, won't affect your algorithm, etc. They can simply find their own music or their own playlist or their own album and then share play it to the car as long as you have CarPlay. AirPlay is another short one. AirPlay will now use on-device intelligence, which is what Apple calls it, to list everything in order. Google already sort of does this. For example, you can see I'm playing this piece here. And at this time, I often like to cast to a specific group. Now, it will be slightly blurred out, but you can see here it's suggesting that I cast to that specific group. And I can click it, and it will do it automatically. Also, if I click this cast icon at the top, you can see that it has suggested, and at the top, that's the one, that's the group that I cast to most often. So, apart from it popping up on the music itself, that's just a YouTube music thing, the order in which things are suggested will be just like that. They will use intelligence to decide what does this person like to cast to most often at this time, and then will put what it thinks you want to cast to nearer the top. Another feature, which is maybe a bit more useful, is you will soon, and this depends on the hotels, be able to airplay to hotel screens. You can already cast to some hotel screens. 
However, usually there's a little bit of faff, but with this, there will be a QR code on the TV. You'll just scan it in the camera app like you would scan any other QR code. And there you go. You will be able to airplay to that television, uh, which will be nice in hotels because, you know, I never use the TVs unless I can cast to them uh, because I don't really want to watch whatever TV channels they have. Anyway, now this change will be very useful for people who have specifically AirPods Pro. Now AirPods Pro, the second generation or the second generation with USB-C, with those two devices, you will have a new uh, adaptive audio mode which blends the transparency mode and the active noise cancellation depending on the situation and what what you're doing if you're talking to someone so that you won't ever have to manually switch just between active noise cancellation and transparency mode this adaptive audio seems to be very good and there are two other changes to airpods and it's simply that there will be faster device switching, which is just nice to have. And if you press on the stem while in a call, it will mute yourself in the call. Now, there hasn't really been much change to Spotlight. However, you can now see app shortcuts in it. As you can see, I search for camera and these app shortcuts, which you would normally see by holding down on the app, have shown up. There you go. I can click on that and it will go straight to video. It's not really the most useful feature, but it's a nice to have. Visual Lookup has had some improvements. Visual Lookup being Apple's Google Lens, basically. The example Apple gives is you can use it to find similar dishes to the one you're looking at from a photo. On top of that, you can access it directly from a photo like this, you can see I select this just as you could in iOS 16 and look up, shows up. There you go, ice cream with only two ingredients, no churn fresh lemon ice cream, and it even works in a video. And that's everything. Thank you all for watching. I hope every single one of you enjoyed that video. And if you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share it, or even subscribe. Anyway, thank you all for watching and hope to see you in the next video.